I'm showing you one plan directly in a browser. And I think where I'll start is I'll start with the a strategic plan piece of one plan in that when we build a strategic plan using objectives and key results and I'll expand this out such that we can see a hierarchy where we have different objectives or strategies like launch new products successfully and there's um, supporting or associated key results that are tangible measures that will help us gauge whether or not we're making physical progress towards the achievement of that particular objective. Um, as we go through something like this and we drill into, say, a particular objective, that objective uh, has different data we might capture around this. Now, we have some templates to get you started, but any data that you choose to capture around this objective is completely up to you. For example, you may have a time frame on this. For example, it might be this quarter's objective or this year's objective, and there could be a series of those. You could have objectives that are in different states of proposed or active or whatever your methodology would um, um, would, would need. And key data points that you'd capture around that objective, like what it is, what's the state, what status is it in? Is it aligned with certain business units or other goals or things like that? And the idea there would be, you know, any description of that, prioritization of this, uh, and then more importantly, what associations does it have with this tangible key results that we're looking for? And those key results with a current metric of how we're progressing on that will give us an idea of how well we're doing in, in possibly achieving these. Now, the key results that are subordinate to this that you saw in the portfolio view of the strategy plan would also have its own capabilities and metrics and data around that. So for example, you might have a metric in here that might be a number, it might be dollars, it might be percentages, or maybe you know, no you know, tangible numeric metric at all. And for example, a target number of saying, we wanted to create 20 case, customer case studies and the target number is 20. And we're tracking the current number and the current metric towards that. We might be uh, looking at this and we might be associated with certain ideas in our system or associated projects that uh, we have in our portfolio, as well as, as I'll show you a little bit later on, some of the uh, enterprise architecture elements, like are there any other applications that this is dependent upon or related to? or any other products that we're working on that are, uh, that, that are related to. And these types of things are uh, important to understand the things that are impacted by the things that we're trying to do here, or the efforts and the elements that are supporting us being able to successfully create those 20 customer case studies. Now, if we go to the enterprise architecture aspects of this, and we look at that, one plan gives you the ability to create portfolios of different enterprise architecture elements. So for example, in this limited case, I've got a set of products that we're working on that are part of our architecture. We have certain business capabilities that are here. We have value streams that we've identified. And we even have applications that are, are part of the mix for an application portfolio. Each of these is really a portfolio in and of itself and can have its own data and attributes associated with it. Um, for example, if I drill into a particular application here, the data we keep around this is much different than we looked at, for example, with our um, uh, objectives and key results. For example, we may have uh, a whole life cycle of a uh, application that we want to support. There may be an overall uh, description of this. There might be an application vision and mission and strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. We might have a prioritization about this or a timeline for its life cycle. We might have an application budget and even things like what objectives and what capabilities and what value streams and initiatives this application is associated with. So once again, these things are all interrelated. Even having things subordinate to this, for example, you can even have a work plan, for example, uh, for a application. And this might allocate some other life cycle things, for example, we might be planning out the different releases that we have across this application as we roll out different releases or upgrades. We might have um, a backlog of items that are supporting this. And in an agile approach, we might have features and user stories that we're contemplating or going to embark upon in order to um, uh, make sure that this application stays current. And the idea here is, is that we can factor in all the dimensions that we'd like to on this application portfolio item, as well as even track financials around this. If we have costs and other things that we want to track to have overall total cost of ownership information in here regarding those applications. 
Now, how does this relate to the overall project portfolio? Well, let me go there. If we're in the project portfolio itself, what I'm looking at right here is a just a flat portfolio um, that is looking at you know, all the different projects that we might be working on or initiatives. In this case, I have different plan types in here. I have projects which we've identified as being more waterfall type projects and epics, which are more agile type projects. Um, you know, also notice that we have different icons on the left side here. This allows us to use a variety of different execution tools to support each of these items. Notice I have some that are using Azure DevOps. I got some that are using, you know, uh, Microsoft Project or Office 365 Planner. And some are using a combination of both Project and Azure DevOps and connected to team sites for that collaboration that we talked about earlier on. The thing is, is that we have a lot of flexibility. And notice we also have projects with no icons at all, meaning one plan is fully capable of doing this without being connected to the other tools as well. So if I drill into a specific project, for example, and I go into the details of this project, notice that once again, this detail page is different than what we saw in the other elements from the strategy or from the uh, application, for example, within the enterprise architecture. We can have different plan types that have their own project life cycles or phasing or gates. The data or metadata we can we categorize or characterize these things with. You might have a business case or an idea that uh, some business case information came over from, as well as other things like project prioritization and snapshots of financials and schedule and effort and those types of things. But as I open up this enterprise architecture area, notice that this particular project is associated with four different key results. It also has a percentage split if we wanna do allocations based on the sharing of cost, for example. And that percentage of split, might, uh, that percentage split may drive how much dollars is allocated or cost is allocated to those specific elements, and a capability to do those type of allocations exist. We're associated with three different applications that are related to this particular uh, effort, as well as two different products, one value stream. And the idea is that this flows from this direction up to those elements, or from those elements down to here, all interrelated in the way that we see fit. Now. Not only the associations that are here, but all the things you would traditionally want to find in a uh, uh, application, I mean, in a portfolio management solution are here as well. For example, uh, in a work plan, you have a work plan and a schedule in here. And as I had mentioned before in there, I have a waterfall based plan here that allows me to build right here in one plan, a waterfall plan from templates and other ways. It allows me to show this with or without a Gantt chart representation uh, on demand. It also allows me to choose whether or not I want to build that plan here or possibly have it come from something like a Microsoft project that this one is particularly linked to, but that's optional. The other aspect in here is that we have other work types. So for example, if you have an Agile project or an Agile component, and this particular project has an element of both. And so in this case, I have a backlog in here that is actually um, can be built right here in one plan. I've got a list of features and user stories and even a sprint-based plan of which sprints these things are associated with. And this could either be built directly here in one plan, whereas in this case, you might have it connected to an Azure DevOps to bring that data in from the backlog that's being managed over an Azure DevOps, or it could be a JIRA. Optionally, you can use those tools, but it can all be done right within here. We can also look into a resource plan. So as we're gonna talk in a little bit about Factoring into our prioritization decisions, do we have the wherewithal or the bandwidth to support the things we are committing to? This gives me the ability to build a resource plan, whether it be early on with generic resources or eventually replacing them with named individual resources, and the ability to plan in terms of either hours, FTEs, or percentages of allocation at a simple you know, toggle in here. And the ability to also find over allocated resources that are shown here and potentially find uh, potential replacements and find resources based on criteria that allow us to determine are there people in here who might have the ability to do a replacement and replace over allocated resources on particular projects uh, as we do do that planning and reconciliation. We also have the ability to look at financial plans and actually track those uh, as we see fit. In this case, I'm looking at a comparison between what we originally budgeted and what the revised forecast look like and how those are offset. We have labor costs that can be coming in directly from that resource plan we just showed you, as well as 
tracking non-labor costs and even bringing those in from our financial system should we want to do that. Um, all the elements that you'd want within your uh, 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 PPM solution and within individual projects can be modeled right here within one plan. Now, if I go back out to the portfolio and I go look at uh, a couple things. One is that resource planning that I showed you within the project that does get aggregated into an overall resource plan, not just on a project by project basis. So for example, I could look at the resource plans and have my resources aggregated by business unit, for example. And here at this level, I can easily see uh, Jack Barker is very much overloaded and it's because he's on way too many projects over too many wait period of time. And this is all rolling up from the individual project levels. And that same reconciliation capability of finding resources to replace uh, different resources are available to us to make those changes at any given point in time. So the idea here is, is that a resource manager who has a more broad view and not just a project single specific view uh, can do this analysis and that data entry as they see fit. Now back to the project portfolio. As we look before at this flat list of projects, we can also build project portfolio hierarchies. And for example, if I uh, wanted to come in here and look at a particular different view and say, give me a portfolio summary, I could come in and say, here's a portfolio level which has programs within the portfolios. And then within those programs, there are different projects and epics within those, all rolling up into entities that are programs that can have their own budgets and their own plans and all those different types of things. Or we could look at some other combination views within this portfolio. And that might be, in this case, I'd look at this uh, project prioritization view that factors in your applications and your key results. So for example, if I look at associated applications in here and I look at associated key results, it's beyond just saying, what is the prioritization score that we came up with based on some formula of how, uh, how important these projects are in relation to one another. It also has us factor in what applications need to be considered as we choose this project. Do we have associated key results that are important, right, that might still be proposed or on hold? And do we have to actually get going on those in order to succeed at achieving those objectives or those key results? So, for example, if I went into the associated key results and I tried to filter on a particular one and I said, um, let me, let's see, I'll say achieve uh, an NPS or a net promoter score of nine from our customers. So now, I'm now filtered down to just the portfolio items or projects and epics that are related to these particular um, uh, associated key results. And in that, I can basically see I, all these projects are active. How are they progressing? Uh, where do they fit in this? If some of them were not on track or some of them were still on hold and needed to be active, activated, I can figure that out from this particular place and use that instead of just the prioritization score that we have traditionally looked at, as well as you know, how, we're, how well we're strategically aligned with our, with our strategies that we've outlined in our strategic plan. Now, in this regard, we can also look at this from a prioritization perspective as well. If I go to more of a uh, all-encompassing uh, prioritization view, this one might give me a view here where I take a look at the prioritization scores and the rankings of these things, and I can rank them accordingly. But I can also do what if analysis. And this what if analysis would allow me to come in and say, given all the projects that are in the mix here, and if I did them all in the FY22 budget that I have, it looks like if I did everything that I have on my plate here today, and this is here some, uh, let me zoom this in so we can see the timelines a little bit better. I have more dollars that would be required that, are, that's the, that is in my budget, or definitely for the year I have more that's, than it's within my budget. So for example, I might say, you know, we need to possibly not do maybe one of these proposed or on hold projects and let this re-rack and get closer to the dollar value that, that we need. We might come in here and say, you know, let's figure out which one of these things we don't do and see as we can reconcile and get closer to achieving that budget. And here I'm getting very close to my budget. And I could also do this also in conjunction with saying, you know, maybe there's a proposed project that's in the mix that we're thinking about still doing, 
but maybe we have to delay it a little bit in order to uh, factor that into the mix and get this closer to our number. And then we can save these as what-if scenarios without having impacted our real data. So the idea is we can do some reconciliation to make sure that we have the bandwidth and we're working on the right things as we go through that prioritization process. And without going through it uh, uh, in total, we can do the same type of what-if analysis saying with this selection and deselections that we made, what resource requirements are there? And do we have the resources to do this? And it can, I can see right now there's a lot of red in my resource plan right now saying this resource plan may or may not be doable based upon what we see here. And maybe we might have to deselect other things, for example, maybe to get this into line in order to say, okay, now we got something that we can do. And once again, I could save this as an incremental scenario as well and review that for decision-making support. Now, we talked about the complex interrelations of having strategic portfolio management and having all those different dimensions of um, allocations and associations that we have. And to be able to visualize those things, it's important for us to look at these. So if I go back to look at more of a portfolio summary view, and let's say for an entire portfolio, I want to look at the visualization around that. So let's say this cloud and mobile first uh, portfolio. Let me go down to the reporting that I have for that particular element, and let me go and select visualize. Now in that visualization, there may be dependencies, in this case there's not, but we do have interrelations in what we call the runway. And this basically gives me a view of saying, for this portfolio, I have these programs that are related. I have these projects and epics that are related to this one. But then I also have these key results and objectives in the strategic plan that are related to these. And I can see these very succinctly and how those interrelate with one another across the entire portfolio that I'm keyed on at this particular point in time. Now, we could look at it from the opposite perspective. For example, I could go up to my strategic plan that we looked at at the outset of this demonstration, and I could say, let me look at the objective of launch new products successfully. And if I go into the reporting and say, help me visualize the relationships there, I can see that there are some dependencies that exist, but I can also see that there are relations now of this objective to the key results, which in turn have some relations to the projects and epics, which in then in turn are related to the other enterprise architecture elements of products, applications, and capabilities. This is just a couple of examples. You can get very uh, different dimensional views of this with this dependencies and runways view in the visualizer. I would also say that we can support this through reporting. If you have people that want to get to this stuff from reporting, uh, I'll give an examples of some things that we've been discussing here today. For example, the key results in this portfolio, you could have a running tally in a report for your leadership, for example, of how we're doing and whether or not we have some cautionary areas on the progress of these key results, or look at them by different things like how we're doing on the ones that are related to finance, for example, and be able to filter those things very readily. We could go look at some things like key result status and saying how we're doing on our key results. And we can see that we're doing very well on some of them, but some of them are lagging behind that may require some attention. And we may want to drill into the project portfolio to see what we're doing to help see that this is not the case for the long term. And then on the association side of things, you can basically see associated things like associated applications and be able to look at, say, these, these pie chart views and say, you know, what application is related to which projects and programs, et cetera. You know, what's associated to the different projects that we're committed to, uh, products, excuse me, we're committed to, as well as things like, you know, what objectives is everything aligned with and see that we are aligned to different things across the way. So different visualizations and things that we have. So just, just a sampling of the types of things that we can do in here.